What's up guys, Mizzofrizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create and spawn projectiles from your weapon. So as you can see here, when I fire, it's spawning projectiles, which have traces and bullet drop. And if I go and I shoot this pile of cubes over here, you'll see that these projectiles also apply a force on anything they hit. And as a little bonus, I'll also be showing you how to turn these projectiles into rockets or grenades. So if I switch to my pistol here, this is set up to fire rockets. And as you can see here, these have a rocket with a trail and a much larger explosion like so. And if I hit pause here and eject, you'll see that these rockets have a static mesh with a rocket trail behind them. Very, very nice and very, very easy to set up. But just before we get started, guys, if you like what we do here at Pitchfork Academy, the number one way to support our channel is by checking out our new game, Skyblocker, which we've just released on Steam. It's a 3D arcade puzzle game where you stack blocks as high as you can to try and get a high score while battling the elements and gravity. But without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, guys, so I'm here in one of my weapon system projects and if you haven't seen my ultimate weapon system tutorial i highly recommend you check that out but don't worry uh this will work with any kind of weapon system i'm just going to show you the basics of creating and spawning a projectile but also guys just fyi i will be using the military weapons packs which are no longer available on fab due to them being long abandoned by the developer but I have packaged these asset packs into a zip and uploaded them to Google Drive for you, just in case you want to use the exact same assets to follow along to this tutorial. But if not, uh, you can use any other assets that you like. With all that being said, I'm gonna head into my underscore project folder and create a new folder, call it projectiles. And in projectiles, I'm gonna right click and create a new blueprint class of type actor and i'm going to call this bp underscore projectile master this will be the parent class of all of our projectiles go ahead and open up bp projectile master and the first thing i'm going to add in here is a sphere collision and then i'm going to drag this sphere onto the root and replace the root so this sphere collision will be the root component of our blueprint here uh, the sphere radius I'm going to decrease to something quite small, like 5 units. It doesn't need to be very big, uh, because this is basically just going to be the collider that sort of initiates the projectile hitting its target. So the only other thing I need to do with this sphere collision is go down to the collision presets, and I'll change this to block all. The next thing I'll do is add my particle system to the sphere, so I'll add and search for particle. And if you're using a Niagara system, uh, the newer system, you can add a Niagara particle system component, uh, but I'm gonna be using particle systems from the military weapons packs. So they are all cascade particle systems, the old system. So I'll select cascade particle system component, and I'll change the template on this particle system to this assault rifle tracer. It's basically a tracer round. Uh, but this tracer is way too big, so I'm also going to lock the scale on this and scale it down by about half, and that should be good. And what I'm going to add next to the particle system is a static mesh component. And this is in case you want to add a static mesh, uh, such as a grenade or a rocket, which I'll show you later on. Um, but we'll parent this to the particle system so that we can sort of uh, move it around if we want we'll be able to move it to the front of the um, particle system like so and just as an example what I might do is just add this assault rifle ammo as the static mesh here you'll see it needs to be rotated I will just turn rotation snapping on and rotate this by 90 degrees move it forward a little bit and I'll leave that there for now uh, but you do want to make sure that your uh, static mesh here doesn't actually have any collision. 
because we're going to be using this sphere collision as our collider. So also uh, go down to the collision presets, set this to no collision. And then uh, we might just want to move the particle system back. So it's, it's sort of about here um, so that the sphere collision is the first thing that's hitting like so. We can also add a radial force, which is what the physics engine uses to sort of add an explosive force. So with the particle system uh, selected, we'll search for radial and, whoops, if I can type correctly, and we'll add a radial force. Um, and basically you can fiddle with the radius here and the impulse strength and a whole bunch of other settings. Um, I'm going to uh, make this a kind of bullet, so it's not going to have a big force pushing outwards. I'm going to change the radius to something like 75, quite small. And uh, the impulse strength is, mm, let's make it something like 8,000 just to play around. And last but not least, let's add a projectile movement component. Projectile movement. And basically, once you attach this component, this whole actor will just act as a projectile. It will move like a projectile with all of the sort of uh, movement characteristics you can define in the details panel here, such as the initial speed, which uh, let's just set to 4000 for now, uh, which is a bit slow for a bullet, but it will uh, allow us to sort of accentuate the uh, projectile movement. So we'll see it in action. And uh, let's also check rotation follows velocity because you will generally want your projectile to sort of rotate in the direction that it's headed. So when it heads in an arc, it will sort of, you know, point up and start to point down. Um, and we don't need to change anything else for now, but there are a bunch of different settings in here. Um, you can make your projectile bounce. Uh, you can make it ignore gravity. You can do all sorts of different stuff. Uh, like, for example, homing. If you check homing projectile, uh, this will just instantly become a homing missile. It's super, super easy to set up. And uh, if you're keen, I can make a tutorial on that as well. Uh, but this is basically, you check this on, it becomes a homing projectile. And then this is your cornering speed. Um, you basically set this to how fast you want your projectile to corner. Uh, but we'll just make a bullet for now. So I'll reset both of those to default. And uh, that's all of the components we need, really. Uh, but we can also set up some code for when this particle system impacts something. So we can head to our event graph here and we'll select our sphere collision. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can find on component hit and add event on component hit. And the first thing I'm going to do when our sphere uh, collides with something is switch off its collision just so it doesn't interfere with anything else. So I'll get my sphere and I'll set collision enabled to no collision. And then I'll grab my radial force and I can find a node called fire impulse. This will fire the impulse of our radial force. And I'll drag off of the hit result here and break hit result, drop this down because we'll use the location and the normal of the hit uh, to spawn a particle effect and a sound. So let's next find spawn emitter at location. And I'm just going to set this as uh, impact metal small, just so that we've got a particle effect spawning. This is from the military weapons pack. I'll drag location into location. And for the rotation, I'll get the normal of the surface that we hit. I'll make a rotator from X, make rot from X vector, and plug this into rotation. So basically we're making a rotator from the, uh, the normal vector of the surface that we hit. So this uh, particle effect always sort of comes out from the surface that we hit, if that makes any sense. Uh, next, we can play a sound at location, play sound at location. And the sound that I will set this as is, uh, I believe it's rifle impact surface. And there should be a cue here, rifle impact surface cue. Nice, this will do nicely. Select that one and the location will be the location of our hit. 
like so. And then uh, what we can do after that is just destroy actor. So this uh, projectile will destroy itself after it's hit something. Turn the collision of the sphere off. Fire the impulse of the radial force. Play an emitter. Play a sound. And destroy itself. And that's really all this needs. Uh, we can now spawn this from a weapon. So if I head down to my third person folder and blueprints, BP third person character, um, I've got this character here with a whole bunch of weapon stuff from my weapons systems tutorials. Uh, but all you really need to know is that when we press the left mouse button, we are firing our weapon. And what we're doing is we're calling this function called fire. And this contains everything that I want to happen each time my weapon fires. So if you double click this and open this up, you'll see that we're playing an animation on the weapon and we're drawing a line trace from the barrel of the weapon. And if you don't know how to do that, I've got a tutorial on how to do that as well. Uh, but basically, if I hit play here, you'll see that when I fire, it's just drawing a line trace from the barrel of my weapon. But we don't want to do that. Instead of drawing a line trace, we're going to spawn our projectile. So instead of doing a line trace, I'll just disconnect that, drag off of here, and I'll spawn actor from class. And the actor I will spawn is my projectile master. I will right click on the spawn transform and split the struct pin. And I'll take the location of my barrel socket and the rotation as well I'll take from the barrel socket, like so. Nice. And that's literally all we need to do. Once we spawn this projectile, it will just be a projectile and act like a projectile, like so. It's impacting and spawning the sound and particle effects. And if it hits one of these cubes, for example, it is uh, also doing the little radial force and pushing the cube around. Nice. And guys, if you wanted to make this something like a rocket or a grenade, it is super, super easy. I can just select the static mesh here and I'll change it to a rocket like so and make sure it's rotated in the correct direction. And the particle system, I'll change the template to the rocket trail. And in the event graph, I'll change the emitter to an explosion, rocket launcher explosion one. And right here, we should have uh, ch -ch 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 rocket launcher explosion Q as well. And uh, you can also select your radial force and maybe increase the radius of this to something like 500. Uh, let's double the impulse strength to 16,000. And then just like that, uh, I know this is an assault rifle, but just to show you that this will now spawn a rocket with an explosion. And it's firing two. I'm trying to just fire one, but it's firing two every time. And if I pause this and we eject and go and have a look, you'll see we've got a rocket with a rocket trail behind it. Two rockets with two rocket trails. And uh, yeah. It's just that easy. That is how easy it is to spawn a projectile. That's it, guys. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.